Ronald Suki King is in danger of losing his World Goes You Please crown, a title he has held for the last 23 years. King finds himself trailing 2-1 after today's round of matches against Italian challenger Sergio Scarpetta. Starting the day tied 1-all, games 17, 18 and 19 were all drawn, but in the final one of the day, Suki lost to the host. With only four more games remaining in the 24-match series, Suki will now have to win at least one and hold the challenger winless. As the defending champion, King only needs to tie the series to retain his title. Scarpetta, on the other hand, only has to draw all four games tomorrow to claim the title that has belonged to the Barbadians since 1991. It may seem like a tall order for the reigning champ, but if anyone can do it, it would be Suki. Barbados women have lost their second game at the Caribbean Basketball Confederation Championships in Tortola. The Bajans lost 83-67 to, to the U.S. Virgin Islands today after trailing 38-23 at the half. Barbados lost their opening game to the Dominican Republic 86-42 yesterday. That's the first half in sports. Back in a bit. Barbados has set the pace in the Seaboard Marine Caribbean Motor Racing Team Championships, finishing the first round on top of the table with 203 points. 30 points behind is the team from Guyana on 173, with Jamaica third on 148, and Trinidad and Tobago in fourth on 34. In the CMRC Championship group, the early leader is Guyana's Kristen Jeffrey who made a sweep of that class's races to rack up 75 points, with Barbadian Stuart Williams on 33 points in second. Here's a look at the final round races in those groups, as well as in the CMRC Superbikes class with Anne-Marie Burke. The CMRC action was in Group 2, Superbikes and the Championship class. Let's start with the Superbike race. Six laps of the circuit to conquer, and it was a pretty even start by all bikers. But by the second lap, the race was really a sibling rivalry. Challenging for the lead, Guyanese brothers Stephen and Matthew Vieira. Matthew having the slight advantage through laps three and four, before Stephen, who's the defending Caribbean champion, made a strategic pass. Brother Matthew returned the favor, but Stephen tactfully regained the lead and just extended it further and further to claim the win and a sweep of the day's races for that class and made a fine start to defending his Caribbean title. The Group 2 championship is usually dominated by a Bajan. In 2011, it was Kenrick Snapper Husbands. In 2012, Mark Thompson. And the reigning champion is Mark's older brother, Kurt Thompson. But that class has not quite started in favor of our local boys, as the race was dominated from beginning to end by the Jamaican Kyle Gregg in his Honda Civic. The challenge for a second was where the rail race was, though. Actually, it was anybody's race to drive for for the second spot. But like flies dropping, a number of drivers either ran off course or were back into the pits, falling victim to mechanical problems. Kurt, too, found himself back into the pits, leaving his younger sibling to carry the charge. Greg was far gone and took the checkered flag without any challenge. The second and third places went to Mark Thompson and another local driver, Edward Corbin. To the big guns, the championship class, eight laps to conquer, and with the rolling start, the big engines roared. Surging to the front, the man who everyone wants to beat, Doug Gore in his Audi TT RS DTM. He is the defending champion. Hot on his heels was Guyana's Christian Jeffrey, driving the Mitsubishi Evo 9. These two basically took command of the race, and it looked like this is where the battle would be. 
but down through the Shark Shark Bend and into the paddock turn, Gore took a spin and that was the end of his run and the definite victory for Jeffrey. With a sterling drive further in the pack was the Bajan Stuart Williams in the Lotus Elise and in for third, the veteran Doug Maloney. It was an action-packed weekend of racing in the Digital Williams International Race Meet. Anne-Marie Burke, CBC Sports. There were straight sets wins for David Arundel and Tommy Rouse in recent action from the annual Silver Hill Road Tennis Tournament. Okay, we've got Tommy Rouse in blue taking on Wayne Grisette. Rouse oh, just oh, along yeah. with a the backhand there. Check out this from Grisette. Rouse wrong footed on that occasion. Yeah. This point was a bit of a rally between the two. Rouse working Grisette forcing him to use the court, unforced error, trying to get it back with his favorite forehand. Take a look at Rouse now, just opening his body. Grisette had no chance there. First game went back and forth, tame ending though into the net, and Rouse took it 25 to 23. Grisette was determined to fight back in the second, came out energetic and with purpose. Good balance and agility. Both players showing some real skill. And Grisette just held his nerve for that Three, point. Four. He really made his intentions clear. Oh, look at that, sending Rouse the wrong way. But Rouse would come roaring back. Check out the precision on that. Rouse played the waiting game well. Just kept putting them back on and letting Grisette make the errors. Yep. And he would win in straight sets, taking this one 22 to 20.